we're going to need to go ahead and remove the stock CPU killer brackets because RIO is going to use a different mounting system. So we just need to remove the screws. Each of the brackets is held on with two screws. Importantly, don't throw these away because if you want to sell your motherboard later or change your CPU cooler, you may well need these. And I'm frequently asked in the comments, where do you buy these from? They come with your motherboard and best place to keep them is in the motherboard box. So you ever need them again, you'll know where to find them. Next thing for us to do is to screw in these mounting brackets for our AIO. There's a thick end and a thin end. It's the thick end that we want to screw into our motherboard backplate. And importantly, this is the back plate that's come with the motherboard. We haven't changed it. So all we need to do is hand tighten this. So this is our AIO. The first job for us to do is to put the brackets onto the pump head. So we turn the pump head over. We're going to put one little bracket here. screws through and go ahead and secure it into place and then same again on the other side next thing for us to do is to go ahead and put the fans on the radiator now this AIO does come with three fans it's a 360 millimeter radiator the problem with the fans is they don't have any RGB on them and I think the build's going to look better if I use some fans that have RGB on them so I'm going to use the Corsair LL120 fans on the radiator um, and I am sacrificing performance for looks because certainly this fan will give us better cooling. It's optimized for static pressure whereas this fan is more optimized for airflow but I think this fan is going to look better in this particular build. So for putting the fans on the radiator the first thing is we have to decide on the orientation. Our radiator is going to be at the top of the case um, it's going to be an exhaust at the top of the case, so we want the front of the fans facing into the case. So this way round is right, this is the front of the fan, this is the back of the fan. The next thing we need to decide is we want the wires facing the back of the case. I do want the tubes over to the right hand side of the case, because I think that's going to look better. So we're going to need to install our fans on the radiator this way round, so that the wires are going to be facing over to the back. So in the IO box we're going to get some long radiator screws, so I'm just going to pass them through the fans and into the radiator. And I'm just going to tighten them up gently first of all. Okay, so now I want to talk you through how I'm going to connect everything up. It's easier probably to do this on the flat table than once we put things into the case. Coming from our pump head, we've got two different connectors. The first is a three pin fan connector, which is going to go into the pump header on our motherboard. This is going to power the pump and our motherboard is then going to be able to control the speed of the pump. Importantly, as this is a three pin connector rather than a four pin connector, we're going to have to run the pump in DC mode rather than PWM mode. So again, just something we need to remember when we go into the motherboard, because if it's set up to PWM mode, the pump is going to run at 100% all of the time. The second cable we've got coming from our pump head is for the pump RGB. And with this, we've got two options. Including our AIO, we have a little adapter. So all we would need to do is plug the adapter in and then it has an addressable ARGB header on the end, similar to the two that we've already plugged into our motherboard. Now we have occupied both of the addressable ARGB headers on our motherboard, so we're gonna to struggle to plug this additional cable in without buying an additional hub or splitter cable. Now the AIO does give us an alternative option. Rather than plugging this cable in, we can go ahead and plug in this little controller. All we would then need to do is plug the other end into our set of power supply, the power of the controller, and then we'll be able to control the lights on the pump head using these buttons. And that's the option I'm going to go for. I'm just planning on setting the pump head to white, and I know from previous experience this controller offers that as an option. So coming from each of the fans, we've got two different connectors. 
we've got a standard four pin fan connector which is going to power our fan and allow our motherboard to control the speed of it. Now because these are four pin connectors it's going to work in PWM mode. The other connector coming from the fan is for RGB and Corsair use proprietary RGB connectors so I'm going to talk you through how we connect it up after we've dealt with the power. So coming from the fans there's going to be three fan power cables but our motherboard only has one CPU fan header. So fortunately with the NIO you get a three to one fan splitter cable. So all we need to do is plug each of the power cables coming from the fans into the splitter cable. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so that's all of our fans now controlled by this single four pin connector, which we're gonna plug into the CPU fan header on our motherboard. So as we've mentioned, Corsair use their own proprietary connectors. If you buy the triple fan pack, you will get one of these RGB hubs and also the Lightning Node Pro, which you're gonna to need to connect up to your motherboard. Um, if you buy the single fan pack, you won't get this. So be careful if you're buying fans, you're gonna to want to get the triple pack because you're gonna need this RGB hub and possibly the Lightning Node Pro, depending on the connections your motherboard offers. So the first thing for us to do is to go ahead and plug in the fans into ports number one, two, and three. It's really important with these Corsair fan hubs that you occupy the fans in order. If you leave a gap, it's gonna break the chain and any fans plugged in after the gap won't work. So we're gonna plug into fan number one, two, and three. And it's important you have the fans in order. If you're gonna to want effects moving from one fan to the other, it would make sense to have the fans one, two, and three. So the effect moved along them in order. Now the other cable coming from the hub is a SATA power connector. It's gonna power the RGB hub. So we're gonna to need to plug this into our power supply. Next, we need to go ahead and plug the other end of the cable, which comes with the triple fan pack into this end of the RGB hub. Our motherboard is a pretty high-end motherboard and it actually has a Corsair fan connector. So all we actually need to do to control the RGB is plug this into the Corsair fan header on our motherboard. Not all motherboards have the fan header, so I will show you what you need to do if your motherboard doesn't have one. Also included in the triple fan kit, you get a Lighting Node Pro. The Lighting Node Pro can control a maximum of two fan hubs. There's two channels and each of them able to take six fans. So you can power 12 fans in total using the Lightning Node Pro. So all we need to do, rather than plugging into the Corsair fan connector on our motherboard, we can plug into channel one of the Lightning Node Pro. The Lightning Node Pro is also gonna take a SATA connector. So that would need plugged into our power supply. We're then gonna to need to connect the Lightning Node Pro to our motherboard using USB. So we would go ahead and plug the USB cable into the Lighting Node Pro. And then the other end of this USB cable into the one of the USB 2.0 ports down the bottom of our motherboard. We would then use the Corsair IQ software to control the fans. But like I've mentioned, because our motherboard has a Corsair connector, I'm gonna remove the Lighting Node Pro and just plug this end into the motherboard and we're gonna use our motherboard software to control all the RGB in our build. Again, you're probably gonna get more effects with the Corsair IQ software, but for me, I'm just gonna set the fans to white and I'm gonna be happy enough using the motherboard software. Okay, so we're now ready to get the AIO into the case. Okay, first stage is to plug all the cables coming from the fans through the back of the case. I have unplugged the fan hub to allow me to get them through the back of the case, but once they're through, I'll go ahead and plug this back in again. Next thing for us to do is to apply some thermal paste to the CPU. So I like to apply a pea-sized amount to the middle of the CPU. Okay, that should do. So all we want to do is line this up with the little standoffs we put in earlier on to the motherboard. And once we have it in place, we're just going to apply a little bit of pressure to the top of it, keeping it in the same area. We're then just going to secure it in place.
you get these in the old box and I'm only trying to get these on loosely first of all and then we'll tighten them up once we've got each corner on. What I'm going to do is tighten each a few turns is going from corner to corner. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and plug the triple splitter cable coming from our three fans in the radiator into the CPU fan header and it is the header at the top here at the front farthest over to the left hand side. So just lining things up and then that's that plugged in. So I'm going to take the two cables coming from the pump. I'm going to take the pump power supply connector and plug it into the next header along. Again, it's a three pin connector, but because of the little notches on the header and on the cable, it can only go into the right three pins. Okay, so that's that one plugged in. And then I'm going to feed the RGB cable out the back with the other wires. The last cable to bring through is the cable coming from our Corsair fan hub and it's going to go to this header in the top right hand side of the motherboard. Okay so that's that one plugged in. Next we just need to secure the radiator to the top of the case using the screws that come with the AIO. Okay so I've replugged in the fan hub and the fan controller for the AIO pump. The only additional thing to do is to power both of them by connecting them up to the SATA power connector. So we'll go ahead and do that. Just line the L's up and then the one on the other. Okay, so that's our AIO installed.